أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم I begin in the name of the Almighty God, the Compassionate, the Merciful, the one who has created everything in utmost perfection. And may the peace and blessings of the Almighty God be upon His pure and beloved messenger, the peak of His creation, the Holy Prophet Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. And his pure progeny of the Ahlul Bayt, especially the leader of our time, the awaited Savior, Al Imam Al Mahdi, Ajjalallahu Ta'ala Farajah. May God hasten his reappearance and make us all amongst his sincere and dedicated servants. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Holy Quran, Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. وَالَّذِينَ هَاجَرُوا فِي اللَّهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا ظُلِمُوا لَنُبَوِّئَنَّهُمْ فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةِ وَلَأَجْرُ الْآخِرَةِ أَكْبَرُ لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ صدق الله العلي العظيم Illuminate your hearts and minds with a very loud salawat اللهم صلى الله As we continue our exploration into the first general ziyara of Abi Abdullah al Hussein, we come across this beautiful passage which introduces a concept to us that we're all familiar with as we have experience with this. If not, our parents have experience with this. It's a concept that is applicable to us and hundreds of millions of Muslims throughout history. In the ziyara, we come to this passage. Al-tamisu kamal al-manzilati indallah wa thabat al-qadami fil hijrati ilayk. We are addressing Imam al Hussein alayhi salam and we say we beseech, we seek the highest and most complete status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be firm and fixed in my migration to you, O Aba Abdullah. We have this passage that speaks of us migrating to Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, asking God to give us the tawfiq and the success to migrate towards Abi Abdullah al Hussein. The topic of migration is an extremely important topic that has many ramifications to it. It is applicable to millions of people around the world in history, especially Muslims. On this evening, let us analyze the topic of migration in order for us to find out how can we migrate to Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Number one, what was the significance of migration in the success of the religion of Islam? Number two, who is the one who had the two migrations? The one who migrated the two migrations. Number three, how do we respond to the migration crisis today in Europe? And number four, how can we train our hearts to migrate towards Abi Abdullah al Hussein. When you examine the history of the religion of Islam, you see that Muslims were persecuted in Mecca on a daily basis. Some of us who think it's very difficult to adhere to the religion of Islam or to be religious, we have no clue those who came before us what they had to go through. We have no clue how difficult it was for them to protect their faith in early Islam in the city of Mecca. Muslims were persecuted at all levels. Many of them, every day they would be tortured. There was an economic embargo on them. They were not free to buy, sell, conduct business and trade as they wished. Socially, they were excommunicated. They were attacked from every direction. Psychologically, there was so much pressure on them. 
The Prophet realized that if these Muslims stay here in Mecca, they will perish. The pagans would eliminate them. Therefore, with the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet instructed those early Muslims to migrate. Where did they migrate to? He assigned a group of his companions and he had Ja'far al-Tayyar, Ja'far, the son of Abi Talib, to be their spokesperson to be the leader of those companions who migrated even though he was the youngest of them. But the Prophet wanted him to lead that group. He instructed them to go to Ethiopia, to Abyssinia, Habasha. He told them there is a king there, he is just. Go and seek refuge in that king. So they went westward towards Abyssinia. They went to the port of Jeddah. They took a boat, they crossed the Red Sea, and they went towards Abyssinia. When they reached the land of Abyssinia, the king who was there in Abyssinia, Najashi, he gave them a refuge because he was a just king, even though he was not a Muslim, he was a Christian. But he had respect for people of other faith. When the Meccans realized that these Muslims are going to Abyssinia and their numbers are is increasing. They are gaining power, they are given refuge. They dispatched two pagans. One of them was Amr ibn al-As. And he took a lot of money and gifts with him. He went to the king of Habasha, he went to Najashi. He told him, why have you, have you given these guys refuge? He gives him the gift to entice him. He tells him, don't you know that these are corrupt people, troublemakers? We were united in Mecca. They came and they split our society. They created a lot of troubles for us. Why have you given them refuge? Najashi, he called on them. Ja'far al-Tayyar was the spokesperson. So he told him, how do you respond to this? What did you do in Mecca? He tells him, oh Najashi, we in Mecca, before the religion of Islam, we committed all acts of vices, meaning the society. We would kill one another. We would steal each other's property. Adultery would be committed. The stronger ones, the powerful ones, would exploit the weak ones. We lived in a miserable state. Then God sent us a messenger who changed our situation. He invited us to worship only one God. He invited us to respect one another. He invited us to care for the poor. He outlawed all of these vices and corrupt actions and we believed in him, we followed him. Because we followed this prophet, the people of Mecca didn't like it. So they started persecuting us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent us verses in our holy book which is called the Qur'an. Najashi told him, he asked Ja'far al-Tayyar, can you recite some verses from the Qur'an for me? I want to hear this Qur'an. He told him yes. And Ja'far was smart. He chose the verses that Najashi would interact with most. He started reading the first few verses of Surah Maryam. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كاف ها يا عين صاد ذكر رحمة ربك عبده زكريا إذ نادى ربه نداء خفيا قال رب إني وهن العظم مني واشتعل الرأس شيبا ولم أكن بدعائك رب شقيا He continued until he spoke about Maryam عليه السلام how she conceived Jesus and how he was born. When Najashi and those priests who were in his presence heard these beautiful words, they could not hold back their tears. Their tears were overflowing. Najashi said, what you have recited and what Jesus used to teach, they both come from the same source. Najashi believed in the message of the Holy Qur'an and he told Amr ibn al-As, go, go to back to Mecca, 
I will not hand these migrants to you. He gave them refuge. And they stayed there for many years. Um Salama was there, the wife of the Prophet. Abdullah ibn Ja'far, the husband of Lady Zainab alayhi salam, he was born there in Abyssinia. When his father had migrated to Abyssinia seeking refuge. This was one migration in the early days of Islam. And this migration allowed the Prophet to protect that early Muslim community. And then you had a second migration. The migration from the city of Mecca to the city of Medina in which he himself, the Prophet, migrated. History tells us that when the Prophet migrated, he left Mecca and he settled in Medina. On his way to Medina, he reached a village by the name of Quba. Now Imam Ali salam did not go with the Prophet. He stayed in Mecca. The Prophet instructed him. He told him, Oh Ali, I want you to stay in Mecca for two reasons. Number one, there are many people, even from the Prophet's enemies, the pagans, they had entrusted me with valuable items. I want you to return those items. Subhanallah, they used to attack the Prophet, accuse him of being insane, accuse him of being a sorcerer, of being a liar. But everyone trusted him. As Sadiq Al Amin. Even his enemies, when they used to travel, there was no banking system back then. There was no safe box you could put your valuables. So they used to bring these valuable items, their golden coins, their jewelry, and give it to the Prophet to protect it for them. He asked Imam Ali salam, stay in Mecca in order to return the items. That's why Imam Ali salam, went by Masjid al-Haram and he made an announcement. He says, oh people of Mecca, any one of you had submitted an item to the Prophet, please come and take it from me. That's number one. Number two, the Prophet wanted Imam Ali salam to bring the three Fawatim. The three Fatimas, because they had stayed behind. One of them was his mother, Fatima bint Asad. The second one was Fatima, the daughter of the Prophet. And at this point, remember, Imam Ali hadn't married her yet. He married her in Medina. And the third Fatima was the cousin of the Prophet. She was the daughter of Az Zubair ibn Abdul Muttalib, the very cousin of the Holy Prophet. He told him, Oh Ali, I want you to bring these three respected women with you to Medina. The Prophet, before he went to Medina, he camped in a village called Quba. Abu Bakr insisted on the Prophet, Why don't you go to Yathrib? Let's go. The Prophet said, No. I am waiting for my beloved brother Ali ibn Abi Talib and my daughter Fatima. When they come, then I will enter Medina. He kept insisting on him. No, let's go. Let's enter. The people have called on you. This is a migration. The Prophet refused. He sent a letter to Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib salam, telling him to hasten. Hurry up, O oh Ali. Come, I'm waiting for you. Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib salam, takes the three Fatimas. He has them riding on the camel and he walked barefoot all the way from Mecca to the city of Medina. When the Prophet saw Amir al muminin Salamullah alayhi, he was overjoyed. He hugged him. He embraced him. But the Prophet, his heart was pained when he saw the feet of Imam Ali. They had swollen and the blood was coming out of them. This is the sacrifice of Imam Ali salam. When Imam Ali and the three Fatimas arrived in Quba, then the Prophet said, now let's go to Medina. Now that my brother has arrived, let's go to Medina. And when he arrived in Medina, the pact of brotherhood occurred. We've all heard of the pact of brotherhood in which the Prophet assigned brothers from the Muhajirin and the Ansar. He would choose one of the migrants, the Muhajirin, and he would say, okay, one of the Ansar, one of the people of Medina is your brother. He assigned all of his companions as brothers, except one man. Ali ibn Abi Talib salam, came towards the Prophet. He told him, Ya Rasulullah, you've assigned all the companions a brother, but you have left me out. Why have you not assigned a brother for me? 
the prophet in front of all those companions. And history narrates this. Sunni and Shia sources have narrated this. The Prophet says, Oh Ali, I have left you for me. You are my brother. Subhanallah. The years go by. Ten, day, ten years after that. Ten years after that. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passes away. They take Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam chained up to the mosque of the Prophet. And they told him, Ali, either you give allegiance or we kill you. Go and read history, see what happened. He told them, if you kill me, then you will have killed the slave of Allah and the brother of his prophet. You know what one of them told him? They told him, yes, as for you being the slave of God, that's correct. You are the slave of God. But as for you being the brother of the prophet, no. You're not the brother of the prophet. How they rejected the position that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. This migration from Mecca to Medina served as a turning point in Islamic history. It was so important such that the Islamic calendar begins with it. This year is 1437, right? What is this based on? This is based on the migration of the Prophet. The migration from Mecca to Medina, it represented a transition from polytheism to monotheism, from immorality to morality, from backwardness to progress, from lack of freedom to freedom. It was an extremely crucial turning point in the history of Islam. The tribes of Mecca were very rigid. Meccans had a tribal mentality. They were very rigid, very backwards. They had no civilization. Whereas in Medina, you had a lot more diversity. It was more of an agricultural society. You had Christians, you had the Jewish people. And because of its diversity and its openness, they were more willing to accept the religion of Islam. But that migration was a very difficult move for those early Muslims. It was nothing easy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highly encouraged them. The Quran promised them that if you migrate and you die on the way, you become a shaheed. And the muhajireen, the migrants, they were given a special title in Islam. They had the honor of being called a muhajir, being a migrant who left his city and settled in Medina. Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, participated in this migration. Shortly after the Prophet migrated, he migrated. Imam Ali السلام, had another migration. You see in his amazing speech, Imam Zayn al-Abidin when he was introducing his father, Imam Ali, in the courtyard of Yazid, in that powerful speech, which shook the foundations of the Umayyad dynasty. He mentions a beautiful phrase about Imam Ali السلام. He says, I am the son of the one who made the two migrations. What was the second migration of Imam Ali? Because we know Imam Ali didn't go to Habasha. The Prophet wanted him to stay in Mecca to defend Islam. So what's the second migration? The second migration of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, was his migration from the city of Medina to Kufa. SubhanAllah, when you contrast these two migrations, it's truly amazing how they're similar and also different. The migration from Mecca to Medina represented Nubuwa and Tawheed. And the migration from Medina to Kufa represented Imam and Wulaya. One was to establish the religion of Islam, and the second migration was to protect the religion of Islam. Many people and some ignorant historians, they say, 
Allah, you are my refuge in every tragedy. In every distressed state, oh Allah, you are my thiqa. I only trust you, you're my only refuge. وَرَجَائِي فِي كُلِّ شِدَّةِ Oh Allah, you are my only hope in every difficulty. وَلِي فِي كُلِّ وَأَنْتَ لِي فِي كُلِّ مَا نَزَلَ بِي عُدَّةٌ وَشِدَّةٌ كم من هم يضعف فيه الفؤاد. If you ever feel your heart, your heart is weak, it's overwhelmed by the agony, by the depression. Imam Al Hussein عليه السلام is describing the state. He says, Oh Allah, whenever my heart is weakened by the depression, by the agony, by that stress. كم من هم يضعف فيه الفؤاد ويخذل فيه الصديق And oh Allah, in all those difficulties, my closest friends, they abandon me. My heart is weakened. I have no way to help myself. I have no way to save myself. Then what happens? He says, أَنزَلْتُهُ بِكَ وَشَكَوْتُهُ إِلَيْكَ Oh Allah, whenever this happens to me, I turn to you truly. I open my heart to you, and I only complain and object to you. No one else. Oh Allah, I find the relief from you. This is a promise from Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Do we not want to migrate to Imam al Hussein alayhi salam? The path of Tawbah is open for us. Open your heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the best way, brothers and sisters, to protect yourself from depression, make yourself busy. Day and night do the right thing. Last year I met a brother in Canada. He was experiencing severe depression. I told him a few things. One important thing that I told him that truly lifted him. Truly lifted him. He is now, alhamdulillah, in the best state. I told him, look, don't give yourself even five minutes to think about your depression. Overwhelm yourself. Overwhelm yourself. Read a book, go out, play, exercise, gather with your friends, do something such that when you go back to your apartment, it's your bedtime, you want to sleep. The minute you put your head on the pillow, you're exhausted, you just sleep. Keep yourself busy. And when you keep yourself busy doing the right things, helping others, increasing your knowledge, focusing on your ibadah, believe me, that night you will sleep the best night. This is the best protection against depression. When at night you put your head on the pillow knowing that today I satisfied my Lord, I satisfied my Imam al hujjah today I helped someone, I gave a smile to someone, I didn't waste time, I increased my knowledge. That thought will give you the best sleep that night. This is the best way for you to lift yourself out of depression. This is the migration towards Aba Abdullah al Hussein. On this night, we speak to Aba Abdullah. We tell you, Oh, Aba Abdullah al Hussein, I am not worthy. I am the sinful creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But oh Aba Abdullah, we have one honor. All of us who've gathered here tonight, who've participating in this event, especially the volunteers, the organizers, we tell you, oh Aba Abdullah, we have no actions. We are truly shameful of what we've done throughout our lives. But oh Aba Abdullah, we have one thing that we're proud of. And that is being your servant, oh Aba Abdullah al Hussein. On the day of judgment, the greatest honor for us is to be a servant of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. We migrate towards Abi Abdullah al Hussein. These are the lessons of migration that we take from the history of Islam. And let's take all these lessons, summarize them in our hearts, keep them encapsulated in our hearts, and move forward to Abba Abdullah. Every morning when you wake up, ask yourself, I'm on my journey, on my migration to Abi Abdullah al Hussein. What should I do today to make this a migration that brings me closer to Abi Abdullah al-Hussein? 
On such a night we commemorate two personalities, the sons of migrants. Their grandfather was Ja'far al-Tayyar, the one who migrated to Ethiopia, to Abyssinia. These two gems of Al Muhammad, these two flowers of the Ahl al Bayt. You know, subhanAllah, every mother, her dream, what makes her happy, is for her to raise kids whom she can see prosper, kids whom she can marry off. Every mother sacrifices for her child, for her son. But there was one mother in Karbala. She pushed her two sons towards martyrdom. Which mother does this, brothers and sisters? Every mother wants to see her two sons live after her. But we had this mother in Karbala, Umm al Masaib, the mother of all tragedies. Can you believe how? Zainab السلام, was for her to encourage her sons and to go fight because she knew she had a brother who was gharib, a brother who was lonely and estranged, a brother who was abandoned and she pushed them to go and serve Aba Abdullah al Hussein. Aunan Muhammad. These two gems of Al Muhammad, they are the grandsons of Ali ibn Abi Talib and the grandsons of Ja'far al Tayyar because their father is Abdullah ibn Ja'far. You see these two gems, grandsons of two of the most amazing personalities in Islam. They joined Aba Abdullah al Hussein in Karbala on the night of Ashura when narration tells us. Zainab gathers her two sons, Aun and Muhammad, and she tells them, My dear two sons, tomorrow the mother of Ali and Al Akbar Layla shall be proud. Tomorrow the mother of Qasim Ramla, she shall be tr proud. Will you make your mother proud? Will you make Zainab proud tomorrow? They told her, Oh mother, we will not let you down. Tomorrow we promise we will illuminate your face. The day of Ashura comes, one by one the companions of Imam al Hussein they fall to the ground. Aun and Muhammad, these two young boys, the eldest one Aun was only 13 years old. He sees Imam al Hussein alayhi salam resting his back on the pole of the tent, seeing that he lost all of his companions. He made a cry which broke their heart. He said, Is there anyone to protect me? Is there anyone to support me? Is there anyone to support these women, these children? Aun and Muhammad couldn't take it. They walked to Aba Abdullah al Hussein, these two young brothers. They told him, Oh, uncle, please give us the permission to go out and fight and defend you and defend these women and children. Imam al Hussein salam, when he sees these two young boys, he could not hold back his tears. It's as if he remembered when he was growing up with Imam al Hassan, that amazing brotherhood that he had. He begins to cry. He tells them, Oh, Aun and Muhammad, how can I let you go and die? You have to stay and protect your mother, Zainab, because a very difficult journey lies ahead of her i want you to be there for your mother zainab the imam refuses to give them permission oh now their hearts are broken they go back to their mother zainab oh our mother zainab our uncle hussein refuses to allow us to go to the battlefield please come and convince him Zainab alayhi salam, she goes to Abi Abdullah al Hussein. She tells him, Oh, Abba Abdullah, please allow them to go and fight and defend you. He says, No, how can I? How can I see these two gems die? protecting me I do not allow that Zainab tells him oh my brother Hussein on the day of judgment the face of Layla shall be shining because of Ali and Al Akbar and the face of Ramla shall be shining because of Qasim don't you want the face of your sister Zainab to shine she begs Abba Abdullah. Oh Allah, which mother in history begs, begs for her sons to become shuhada. 
Imam Al Hussein's heart is broken. He says, "Okay, fine. I have now given the permission." They farewell their mother. Then they go to Abu Al Fadl Al Abbas. Some narrations say that Abu Al Fadl Al Abbas, when they were younger, he would teach them the art of fighting. They went to Abu Al Fadl Al Abbas. They told him, "Oh, Abu Al Fadl, this is our final farewell." They gave their salam to Al Abbas, and they went out to the battlefield. As for Muhammad, very valiantly, so courageously he spoke lines of poetry and he told them, may Allah blind all of you, you have changed the religion of Islam, you have changed the Quran, you're fighting about Abdullah al Hussein. why do you find such a noble man? As for Aun, he goes out to the battlefield and he recites, In tunkiruni fa'ana ibn Ja'fari if no one knows me, then let me tell you, I'm the son, I'm the grandson of Ja'far al-Tayyar. Do you know who Ja'far al-Tayyar is? He is that shaheed whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him two wings in paradise. He, both Aun and Muhammad, they take the sword, they charge at those enemies, they fight so courageously, they kill many of those cowardly men. Umar ibn Sa'ad, he calls on his army, he tells them, woe upon you! Don't you see how they're killing us? Charge at them from every angle. Do you not know who they are? These are the sons of Zainab. These are the grandsons of Ali. Don't give them any leeway because they shall massacre us all. They charge at them from every direction. But oh believers, two young boys, one, the oldest one is 13. How much can they fight? They surround them from every direction. And then they strike them. They fall to the ground. Own falls to the ground. He says, Assalamu alayka ya Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. Oh Abbas, are you proud of us? You trained us for this day. You're the one who taught, taught us the art of warfare. Oh Abbas, are you proud of us? And then Imam al Hussein alayhi salam comes to the body of Aun. He's breathing his final moments. He looks at Abu Abdullah al Hussein. He tells him, my dear uncle, are you proud of me? And Imam al Hussein says, Yes, my dear nephew, I am proud of you for what you have done. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. Then one narration says, I'm told that Imam al Hussein, Oh, my dear uncle. I have one request from you. He said, yes, what is it? Tell me. He told him, go when you go to my mother Zaina. Tell her that I did not drink water because I knew that she was thirsty and I wanted to die thirsty in order to show my love for my mother Zaina. Narrations tell us that when they passed away and when they became shaheed and Zainab realized they became shaheed, Narrations tell us that Zainab would cry for all of the martyrs in Karbala. She cried for Ali and Al Akbar. She cried for Al Qasim. She cried for Abdul Fadl Abbas. All of them. But only when her two sons became shaheed, Zainab did not cry. She fell on the floor in sujood and she said, Oh Allah, I thank you for giving me this honor that my two sons become shaheed. Zainab was very strong. She did not want to fail the mission of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Narrations tell us in Karbala, she did not cry for them. On her way to Kufa, she did not cry. She wanted to show the enemies. She was strong defending Abi Abdullah al Hussein. In Sham, she did not cry. But... <laughs> When she came back to Medina, one narration tells us when she came back to Medina and she went inside the house. And she saw the rooms of Aun and Muhammad. She could not control herself. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon.
وسيعلم الذين ظلموا آل محمد أي منقلب ينقلبون السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين وعلى أختي زينب ورحمة الله وبركاته